Hey, y'all. So um, I don't normally do this, but I felt like I had to jump in because the case that is taking place with Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade is so juicy. And there are so many psychological implications to it that I had to jump on and talk about it. So for those of you who have been hiding under the under a rock and you don't know what's going on or you have no clue about what's going on, I, I'm going to try and um, do a quick summary and then we'll do a psychological evaluation or analysis or we'll just talk shop um, as we dive into some of the issues that are taking place. And so. Again, big legal case in Georgia involving Donald Trump and some of his allies, but um, I just felt things got very drama filled. It was so dramatic that I could not take my eyes off of it. So the two main prosecutors, I mentioned them already, um, Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade, um, admitted that they were in a romantic relationship. And you may think that there's no big deal um, about being in a romantic relationship, but the reality is there is. There is a big deal. The, the hearing really got intense and messy and complicated. And the judge, of course, had to jump in um, multiple times. And yes, I watched it. I watched every second of it because I couldn't keep my eyes off of it. It was so much drama. You know, as a therapist, I see so much on a daily basis. I hear so much. And of course, um, you know, it is what it is because I say it all the time. Life is messy and complicated. But um, the judge had to hop in multiple times. And of course, the Trump team argued um, that the prosecu the prosecutors, again, Fani and Nathan, should be removed from the case or that the charges overall should be dropped. And that kind of makes sense because I look at it as... Um, of course, there being a conflict of interest. Now, I'm not an attorney, of course. I'm a licensed mental health therapist, but we're going to talk all things psychology behind the scenes. And hold on, that's my phone. Let me turn that off really quickly. And so um, interestingly enough, um, they talked about money being exchanged uh, between the prosecutors and mentioned um you know, like where they kept their money and did they keep their money at home or did they keep it in a safe or did you withdraw money? How did you get the cash and why was the cash important? And you didn't deposit the cash and all sorts of things. And again, kept me on the edge of my seat because I wanted to know where the cash came from, but I also wanted to know what difference does it make? And then I was like, wait, wait a second. What's really going on here? What was the origin of the cash? Where did the cash really come from? I wasn't sure. So of course, you know, the hearing continued and um, one of the prosecutors at that time, I believe it was um, Nathan Wade was on the stand. Um, but interestingly enough, Fani walks in and she's like, I want to be on. I'm, it's it's my turn because I have something to say. And of course, I was like, oh, this is getting deep. This is getting deep. So, again, glued to my screen like this. So I'm just gonna go over a few key points from the hearing. And again, lots of surprises, uncomfortable. Their report, I was like, no, we don't need to know that. We don't wanna know that, but do we need to know it? Maybe we should know it because again, I don't know. Are we talking about taxpayer money? I, I, I don't know, I don't know. But again, deeply personal issues, deeply. Okay, so. Summary point number one, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Fani because honestly, she does not represent all Black women. I'm going to say that first of all. So Fulton County District Attorney Fani Willis, um, you know, she charged Trump with racketeering. She took the stand to defend herself and answer questions about her relationship with Nathan Wade, um, another who's the other prosecutor on the case, which I mentioned earlier. Um, of course, this is a highly, this is a highly unusual situation because Willis acting more like a prosecutor in her testimony um, 
she she didn't really seem like a witness. The way she was coming at Ashley Merchant, I mean, she was just like drilling her and drilling her. And I was like, okay, this is highly disrespectful. This is, I mean, at one point she had grabbed papers and she was like, and this is what it is. And you lied and you lied. And I was like, hey, you don't have to show everybody the angry black woman character. We don't want to see that. They already say that when there's an angry black woman, we're not trying to see that. But of course, everything about her disposition was unprofessional. We'll be friends to the day we die. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let's, we just have any questions? I'm going to handle this. Say that. Let's Did have you a, ask about a personal relationship? Yes, when the romantic relationship ended. That's the question. It sometime in, um, I'd say late summer of 2023. But I don't believe me in, um, wait, this is what you're really asking about. This is the salaciousness of all of this, right? So I'm just uh, asking about your romantic relationship when you stopped dating. I, asking. I, I think that me and Mr. Wade, so he's a man, he probably would say June or July. I would say we had a tough conversation in August. So that men in relationships at the end of physical intimacy, women in relationships when that tough conversation takes place. And where, um, when did he come to, I guess the condo, I'm not sure what you called it, condo apartment. Um, would he come and stay at that condo or visit you there? I'm sorry, visit you there. What condo, what apartment? I want to be clear. So not your house. I know you classified one as house and one as condo. So I'm trying to use those terms. So um, there's been more. That, see, what you don't understand is because of this case, I got to move. And so I, I person, think if you could ask a more precise yes, question, please give me the time period. Yeah. Did Mr. Oh. Wade visit you at the place you laid your head? When? Has he ever visited you at the place you laid your head? So let's be clear because you lied in this. this let me tell you which one you lied in right here. I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. no. This is the truth, Judge. And this, it, it, it is a lie. It is a lie. Ms. Willis, Mr. Sena, thank you. We're going to take five minutes. Now, I don't know what you think about that, but from my take, she did not represent Black women well, which, of course, drew a little bit of criticism uh, from the judge. Here's point number two, denial of personal responsibility. So Willis repeatedly emphasized that she was not on trial and accused defense attorneys of, of course, spreading lies. Um, she argued that the focus should be on Donald Trump and the other defendants who are really accused of election interference rather than on her personal life. But Fonnie made it about her personal life when she chose to hire her boyfriend and give her boyfriend over $600,000 where the other attorneys who were on that case, I think, got $150,000 and the other one got $250,000, but her boyfriend got over $600,000. And I'm just saying to me, that sounds like a conflict of interest. I'm just saying, but okay. Um, number three, point number three. Again, this is just a brief summary. And then I want to dive into the psychology behind betrayal. Betrayal of family, friends, and lovers. I mean, deep rooted betrayal here. And I mean, when I say it's juicy, it is so juicy. I'm not coming from a legal perspective. Disclaimer don't really care about that at this point, but I do care about the interaction of the psychological and, and emotional and um, uh, mental and spiritual and all of those things that take place in relationships. And what in the world? What in the world makes a person betray some, and I mean viciously betray, what makes another human being betray someone that they once said they loved and was in an intimate relationship with? But now it's like you're shooting them in the back, you're stabbing them in the back, and you're, this is so juicy and deep. So I'm going to get into all of that. But let me get back to the summary. The summary, summary point number three, and I think that this is a is an interesting point. Why? Because the timeline of the relationship means everything. As a matter of fact, this is where all the lying came in. Like most of the lying came in at this intersection. It's this intersection between 
the money and um, the relationship. It was when did the relationship start? That's where most of the time has been spent. And this is an important point. So the timeline of the relationship. Now, Nathan Wade, he testified that the romantic relationship with District Attorney Willis began in early 2022, early 2022. But a former friend of Willis contradicted this. And she said the relationship started in late 2019. Now, this timing is important because Willis, District Attorney Willis, Bonnie Willis, hired Nathan Wade, her romantic partner, in 2021. So we're going to dive a little bit more in that. Why is that important? Because they want to prove or show, Ashley Merchant and her team and Trump's lawyer, they want to show that there was some sort of um, what Bonnie Willis did was she used a dual relationship or her dual relationship with Wade to profit or benefit from the money that came in for um, prosecuting Trump. So that's why this is important. Number four, the financial transaction. So Nathan Wade, he claimed that he and Willis, Fani, used cash for reimbursements. Now, this is where it starts to get sticky, which explains the lack of paper trail for their expenses. Because every time someone asks, how did you pay for it? Did you use a credit card? Did you, well, I used the credit card, but she reimbursed me cash. So I don't have a paper trail for this transaction. So it got very convoluted and complicated really quickly. So he denied way he did. He denied accusations of kickbacks from uh, Willis and stated that he didn't deposit the cash into his account. So that's that's the fourth uh, summary. Number five. The number five uh, bullet point is the breakup and the sexist remarks. Now, this um, is where it's really started getting interesting. So Willis revealed that Wade made sexist remarks during their relationship, which unfortunately or fortunately, contribute to their breakup. So she emphasized that, you know, I'm an independent woman. She stated she didn't need anyone to pay her bills, that she definitely didn't need a man. She said the only man that's ever paid her bills was her daddy. And of course, I was like, okay, okay. So what does all of this really mean? And does it mean anything anyway, because they really didn't ask her all of that extra information. They just wanted to know very specific, poignant, um, the answers to very specific and poignant questions. But um, it, it seemed like she just talked herself into a circle. And the more she kept talking, the more I kept saying, Fani, no, just stop, stop talking. Like, don't talk anymore, please. Now, I don't have a dog in the fight doesn't matter to me one side or the other. I'm just looking at this from a psychological perspective. But if I were her, mm -mm, <laughs> do not get on the stand like that. So anyway, I remember her saying nobody pays her bills but her daddy. And her daddy always taught her to keep cash in the house. And that's what most Black people do. And that is not true. I don't know where she got that from. And I don't even know how she is able to speak for all Black people. That is very presumptuous, um, very egotistical. Just, I don't know. But you can't speak for all Black people. Anyway, uh, let me move on. So number six, summary point number six. So it's the distraction from... Trump's legal issue. So this was this distracted from the real for the the purpose that the real case was even instated, which was um, it was a case against Trump and his co-defendants. But now we're talking about Fani and Nathan. So um, of course, at the end of the day, 
this drama that has taken place, again, it's definitely juicy and dramatic. But if you ask me, I'm not an attorney, but if you ask me, um, yeah, they're going to be thrown off of this case. And um, even though this is a distraction from, you know, Trump's legal issue in Georgia, I think it's going to benefit him in this. Uh, they're going to be uh, thrown off the case. So overall, the hearing itself has shed light on some of the complexities, um, the drama, the personal dynamics involved in this Georgia case against Trump. So what I want to do in my next video is I want to talk about the psychological implications and how this there was just a web, a woven web of deceit and treachery and betrayal and lies and all the things and the implications of how that impacts us psychologically. And so, um, yeah, I'm going to keep it uh, short and sweet, uh, as simple as possible. So I hope you um, hit the like button on this, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next video.